my name is Evie Oroko and I'm the uh, Managing Director of Ari Consulting Limited as well as a Change Management and a Performance Improvement Consultant. Um, what I'm hoping to talk to you today about is uh, my 10 tips on creating and sustaining a step change in organizational performance through effective change management. So you probably will ask why I chose this topic. Now the reason for this is that because I'm absolutely passionate about change management. I, I take huge pride and pleasure in taking an organization from one state to the other in designing what that future solution would be, making it bespoke to what the, the current challenges are. Um, and actually guiding them through that whole change journey, I, I take huge pride in it. So, uh, over the next uh, few minutes, I'll just want to touch on the 10 tips that I perceive to be things that will transcend different organizations, different boundaries, different uh, industries, and it also internationally, things that really would help um, change management professionals as well as businesses across the world. So, number one, get your vision clear, get it infectious, and also get your vision visible. And why do I say this? You can't hit a target you can't see. Every single member of your organization needs to know where exactly you're trying to take them to and where they fit in that journey. Because that's the very first thing that you would always refer to when the times get hard, when things get challenging, and also that's what they will check to see whether they are achieving their goals. So it's absolutely important that everyone that comes through your organization, whether that be a new starter, whether that be a temp, um, they need to know what exactly you are trying to achieve as an organization and exactly what their value within that vision is. So that, I will say, is my number one tip. Tip number two, know your customer. Now, lots of people will say, oh, that's just a cliche. Lots of people always talk about customer experience and, and customer being centric to everything you do, but you cannot overemphasize that enough. Remember why you actually have revenue in your company. Remember why you actually come to work every day. Who creates the demand for what you're doing. So it's absolutely key that you understand what the basic needs are, the performance needs, as well as the things that you can do to delight your customer. Now I'll give you a little bit of an analogy. So imagine you walk through a, a mobile phone store and then you, what you would really want from that is that you want to have a mobile phone with a nice contract, with enough minutes, and then um, you actually also want to have a phone that can take some nice pictures. Those are the basic things that you need from that service. You actually walk in and um, someone invites you, gets you to sit in, you have a beautiful environment and you actually have your best um, musician actually playing in the background and it's a beautifully well laid environment and then you actually in and out of there in 12 minutes so it's actually even beats your um, performance requirement so they've done something actually faster then you get back home and then what happens you turn on your mobile phone and then you cannot send a text message or you make phone calls and they just keep dropping that extremely good service that you had received, all of a sudden then becomes a very bad service because they have not met your basic need. Every company needs to understand what the basic needs of their customers are. They also need to understand what their performance needs are and those are the needs where if you do more of, you actually get better and you actually have better customer uh, performance or have a better net promoter score um, and also you also think about the things that are delighters so this all comes from a Kano model which you can actually google if you uh, have the time but basically it's saying that every single thing that you need to achieve as an organization needs to meet your customers needs and they need to be either basic performance or delighters but you need to establish channels through which you can actually communicate with your customers consistently because the, the, the mood of customers do change with the macroeconomic uh, factors that are around you. 
um, and your competitors actually doing things that are even more innovative. So you always need to keep in tune with your customers. So I would say that is my number two tip on actually increasing your performance through proper change management structure. So number three, engagement, engagement, engagement. About a year ago, I um, was asked to lead a, and design a change program for a part of a, a large um, utility. And when we got to understand exactly what the mandate was and what the vision was, it was absolutely imperative that we really got under the skin of what had made the previous change programs not work and what had made um, the situation get to the position that it was in, in, from a, pers a performance perspective. Now, the way we did that was actually to engage with the employees for a whole month. All myself and the team did was really getting under the skin, doing lots of presentations and sit down groups and, and focus groups and just trying to understand what it is that they expect from us and also how we can work with them. What that did was that it actually made vision very clear. Remember step one. Also, what it did was that we got to address all the current challenges and all their, got, got to have a feel and a gauge for uh, the, the things that could potentially trip us up across the program. So engaging with the staff as well as the management is absolutely key to successful change management. When you do that, remember, you could actually have a do-nothing option. And sometimes when they see that a do-nothing option is absolutely non-pleasant, they get to understand that something must be better than what they're doing right at the moment. But also, you really need to sell that. You really need to engage with the hearts and minds of people. Remember that people are not robots. You could actually have a very good vision, a very compelling case, but you need to understand what makes people tick. Always remember, address the question, what's in it for me? Number four, focus on the end to end, not just local efficiencies. Now, what do I mean by that? Many times you have processes that have been drawn up many, 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 many years ago and they tend to work in silos. So you get to have an organization where the planning and scheduling team do something and they have their own key performance indicators that are not necessarily aligned with the guys that are actually out there doing the delivery function. So they celebrate and they say, wow, fantastic, we've had a fantastic week, we've We've hit all our performance metrics, but what are the guys in the delivery function saying? Oh my goodness, look at the batch of work that has just come over to me. And you always then get to forget that at the end of this whole chain, you actually have a customer. Now, remember that you are only as fast as the slowest member of a process. So, you need to focus on the end-to-end -end efficiencies. And sometimes, don't be shocked to see that your key performance indicators, by the time you have translated the voice of the customer through critical um, to quality metrics, you get to understand that the key performance indicators that you actually do have are not fit for purpose. So you should, you should be comfortable with actually amending them and making sure that they actually lend themselves to continuous improvement, they lend themselves to actually meeting the customer at the point of their need and making sure that there is an absolute flow from beginning to end of the process and it's all about the customer. Also, when you want to reward your employees, think about that value stream, the beginning to the end of how value is created across the organization. Though local efficiencies are still important for individual team um, effectiveness and measurement, it is not what the customers necessarily pay for. They pay for the finished product. So incentivize that finished product. Incentivize the end to end. Number five, be serious about your internal customers. Why do I say that? Most organizations are 
absolutely keen on their external customers. But they then get to forget that you have internal customers as well. For a product, for value to be created from one part of the process to the end of the process whereby a customer actually gets the service or the product. It needs to go through a series of steps. At the end of each step are measures. Measures that are like a relay baton that says, I'm running this relay and I'm giving you the baton to continue that journey. Now, at that moment where you actually pass on that baton to the next person in that process, that, that receiving person is also an internal customer. And he has his own metrics. He has his own requirements to actually make him able to deliver for the customer. So, review your end-to-end. -end. Understand exactly what it is that you need to do and focus on value-adding activities. Things that the customer will actually pay for. Reduce your necessary non-value-adding activities which are things like um, you know, recording information for legislation, for regulation, things like that. And finally, eliminate waste. Things that a customer does not see value in. And things many times, even the people that do it, do not see value in. And when you ask them, why is it that you are doing this particular activity? Well, the answer you tend to get is, we've always done it that way. Lean Six Sigma methodologies will always talk about um, it will talk about waste, it will talk about variation in processes and all these things are all inherent in processes everywhere today. What we need to do is focus on getting from one stage to the other as fast and as most efficient as possible without having lots of waste within the process.